Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I want to take a little bit of time and look at the blockchain. I've done a lot of writing about the blockchain over the last two, three years. Uh, I continue to research what we mean by the blockchain and these different uh, technologies. And so I wanted to put together a quick video to talk about what is it, at least my thinking about the blockchain right now, uh, to try and help spur future discussion and learning um, and as I work with other individuals. So when we start thinking about the blockchain, what it really is, um, is a distributed database that has a continuously growing list of interconnected timestamped data records. Um, and this definition by itself is pretty confusing. So let's try and unpack it a little bit and think about what this really means. So when we start thinking about the blockchain, the, the initial instance that we see of the blockchain is from the Bitcoin blockchain. So Bitcoin is a, a financial unit. Um, it is a currency. There are, are multiple alternate currencies that exist out there. But the blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin. Um, blockchain is one of the technologies that makes the Bitcoin do what it needs to do. So as Bitcoin has grown in popularity and, and notoriety, we also see a lot of people looking at the technology behind it to figure out, okay, well, what can we do with that technology aside from just dealing with financial uh, elements? It should also be stated that not only does the blockchain inform what's happening with Bitcoin, but we also see the technology from the blockchain being used in other uh, instances. So we think about that distributed ledger, the distributed database, and think about, okay, where else can we use this? And we see different versions of it. So we see chains and alternate chains. So we see different versions of the blockchain where they take the initial technology of the, the blockchain or the Bitcoin blockchain, and they might, you know, make it a little bit more open or a little bit more secure or a little bit more private, or they might use it instead of finances, they might use it for a different purpose. They might use it for intellectual property or for credentialing or whatever the case may be. So one of the things that I'm trying to, to unpack in this video is what are the philosophies behind the blockchain? And then how might we think about these uses in other areas and in other capacities? One of the things that we also need to think about as we get into this is that this understanding of the blockchain and these distributed ledger technologies is terribly complicated. You know, we're thinking about encryption, which many times is one of those subjects that we don't want to talk about. Um, you know, sometimes in our, in our discourse, you know, or in our national discourse or international discourse, we view privacy and security and encryption is either being something that's challenging or too hard to understand or it's something that's not patriotic or it's something that you know only certain people should worry about so there there's a lot of challenge in this because the blockchain and these technologies one are somewhat difficult to understand and, and hard to really you know fathom uh, the complexity of it they're also intricate in many ways but then also you know there are some times where you know, we don't want to or we don't think we should talk about privacy, security and encryption. OK, so there's there's multiple reasons why this might be a challenge. Please understand that these materials that I'm showing here, this is my understanding of the blockchain and ways that I've helped uh, make sense of it in my own work, but then also help others. So you think about the blockchain, we're really thinking about two components or two different parts. One is the peer to peer network that makes all of this stuff. Uh, run and then the other is the decentralized distributed database um, that is that log or that um, listing of those transactions within the blockchain or those interactions within the blockchain so first off peer-to-peer -peer networks this is something that you know we've seen in the past uh, a peer-to-peer -peer network is basically a network of nodes so each node would be like a different computer in the network or a different center within that um, and when we add information into that network, the, the idea between a peer-to-peer -peer network is that it's immediately and, and privately, it should be privately, propagated throughout the network. So this might be, you know, in file sharing, which is one of the first ways that many of us first started thinking about or heard about peer-to-peer -peer networking, is we thought about technologies where, you know, like Napster or Kazaa or uh, BitTorrent where people would add information or add a file and it would share, it would propagate that information across people's computers. So 
when we think about a peer to peer network, we have to think about the, the idea that encrypted private de identifiable data, especially in the blockchain, is, is propagated immediately upon addition. So within that network, we're automatically sharing that information across nodes of the network. But then as we change or modify or add new information or delete information, that's automatically changed and modified across the, the whole network. So effectively, whatever files or information or quote unquote truth that we have on one computer or node or, or part of this network is automatically spread across all of the others. The other important thing is that this network, this peer to peer network, the idea is that the, the network is decentralized. So there's no real one point of failure as nodes come and go. So if we add in a new node to the network, that's fine. The other computers or servers or, you know, instances on that network, they'll recognize that this is somebody new on the network and this is a new node and they just share the information with that other node and they go on, at, you know, as they uh, normally would do. The other thing is there's no one point of failure. So if one computer or node or part of this network goes down, the other ones carry on. Um, and, and so that's a very powerful piece is that it's decentralized. There's no like one main computer and all of this. All of them are equal. So within the Peter Pitt network, we're also thinking about a decentralized distributed database. So we have that peer to peer network that's operating and then we have to think about, OK, well, what is the the, the information or what are the files um, that exist within it? So if we think about a peer to peer network and file sharing and BitTorrent or Napster, thinking about a, a media file or a PDF or some sort of document or some information that's being shared around there with the blockchain and these distributed led ledger technologies, we're thinking about, OK, what databases are flowing throughout it? So when we look at the blockchain, and once again, this is my understanding of it. I'm overly simplifying all of this just to get to the philosophies and the, the root of all of this. So we think about the blockchain. It starts off with the Genesis block. That's the initial block in the sequence. It contains information about the, the database. It contains information about um, the, the information that's there, the rules of all of that. So it's really the first block in all of the system. So the very next uh, block after the Genesis block, after that first block, we start to see anonymized information. So the anonymized information is stacked in individual blocks. A lot of these are time sequenced. So when we have a transaction, so for thinking about the Bitcoin blockchain, we add a transaction, then we have a secondary transaction. So this might be I send five dollars or five Bitcoin to another individual. So we see these transactions that are stacked up in individual blocks. All of the information in the blocks is anonymized. Um, it includes time, date, data, a lot of other information that's there. And once again, we're just simplifying it to understand the, the basic elements of the blockchain and these technologies. So as we stack up these transactions or these information uh, changes, in those blocks at the bottom of it or the top or whatever your frame of reference is but somewhere on that individual block there is a signature this is a hash this is an encrypted uh you know signature it's an element that's added to the block and what that does is it links back to the previous blocks so on this first block we're going to have all of those transactions and they're all stacked up in the block and then somewhere on that, on the bottom of it, that we have that signature, that hash, which basically signs off the block and say, this block is done, this block was finished at this date, this time, the, you know, all of the other information, a lot of other meta metadata. And that block is linked to the Genesis block. So then after this first initial block, then we continue to add blocks sharing the same process. So each block has a... a you know, collection of transactions that are stacked up in it. Uh, each block has that hash or that signature that basically signs, seals, and basically encrypts all of the information there and denotes all of that metadata that we talked about before. And each one of these is linked to the previous one. So we have all of these signatures that are linked to the previous block in the chain. So all of these little links in that chain form that blockchain that we've been thinking about. So what we're, we're you know, we're thinking about here is that distributed database. So this 
database or this collection of information that we're collecting over time is just transactions it's anonymized it's encrypted we're stacking these in order we're being very overt and transparent in you know where and when this information is coming from and then we're linking it and chaining it back to that initial genesis block so once again this is an initial uh, overview of the philosophies behind the blockchain the main reason of this is just to try and unpack what this all means and by all means this is you know a very uh, basic overview of what the blockchain is and it's a way for us to think about what it could be for the future so once again thanks for watching hopefully this helps out uh, and by all means if there this video is a value to you please leave a comment please leave a comment if I got something wrong or if there's an easier way to explain a lot of this thanks again